Welcome back. This chapter is chapter nine, reporting and analyzing long lived assets. So what are those? We are about to find out, but we are staying on our statement of financial position. That is our balance sheet. And we are staying on the assets side, at least for now, for this week. We have three learning objectives. We are going to look at determining the cost of the property, plants, and equipment, uh, which I will likely be referring to a lot as PP&E. Uh, we will then look at explaining and calculating depreciation, that is little bits of the value of the cost of PP&E over time, and then de-recognition of PP&E, what happens uh, when we use it all up or get rid of it. So I like to look at LOs one, two, and three as beginning, middle, and end. All right, so let's start, of course, with the beginning. Property, plant, and equipment, otherwise known as PP&E. These are uh, long-lived resources that are controlled by the company, have tangible, that is physical substance, that is if I, I'm gonna knock, my dogs are gonna bark, if I knock the table, oh, really good. Uh, you know, if we can knock it, it has some substance, uh, so that is, it's tangible. Uh, they're used in the operation of the business, so there are money makers, there are assets. If you've ever heard of human capital, that is the intangible assets of a corporation um, that you know we won't cover in this course. So we're talking about long-lived resources like tractors, like buildings, like things that you can knock um, that are okay to knock. Okay, so um, these are not intended for a sale to customers. You don't buy and use a bunch of tractors with the intent to sell them right away. You might end up selling them, but that is not like the sole purpose of your business. And uh, these are long lived, long meaning, you know, greater than one year. And these really are. They are intended to provide economic benefits over many, many years. So you can see how this relates to the definition of an asset where an asset is the result of a past transaction um, that the company controls and that they expect future economic uh, or inflows or resources to come from. So these are just a more specific type of asset. Alrighty. So these things are recorded at cost and cost needs to be defined. Uh, cost means it's purchase price. This means any non-refundable taxes, uh, duties, um, less any discounts or rebates received, um, any expenditures necessary to bring the asset to its intended location and make sure it's intended uh, ready for intended use. So my, um, who do I, I guess former acquaintance uh, in Calgary owns a uh, furniture um, company. Uh, like they sell really high-end um, office furniture. So they might be, you know, delivering his, his uh, staff might be delivering a desk and a chair worth like 15 or $20,000. And I guess maybe that's not like really high-end, but like dang, <laughs> compared to Ikea, you, you get what I'm saying. So they might have a whole truck full of this equipment and, um, uh, or they might be picking it up um, and, uh, you know, getting the equipment, they might have just purchased it and, um, Sorry, I shouldn't say equipment. Oh, goodness. Um, this would have been like their inventory. And so they're picking up the inventory and say they see the red light camera, which in Alberta is a camera that costs, uh, it's at intersections and if it goes off, um, it will catch you, go blow in a red light and charge you like three, four, five hundred dollars $500. I don't know. I just remember the last one I received, it was about $350. Yeah, ouch. Anyways, so that would be an example where the acquisition of the inventory where um, you could actually add the cost of the red light ticket to that acquisition of inventory because he had a company policy that if you are already about to go through the intersection, um, not to slam on your brakes, um, you know, you could be unsafe, you could um, ruin a bunch of, uh, you know, your inventory and really, uh, you know, you've already made a mistake, no need to kind of like double down and just on a go forward basis, make sure that you approach all intersections at a slow enough pace that you can break should you be concerned about a red light or red light ticket. 
So within that, it would be similar if his company were to be picking up uh, and acquiring an asset, maybe a tractor, maybe an office, uh, you know, equipment uh, for their own place. Uh, so any cost to acquire such assets can be a part of those um, costs that we recorded at. Uh, this also includes the estimated future cost um, obligation to dismantle, remove, or restore the asset at the end of its useful life. So for example, De Beers, uh, they are a giant uh, diamond company. Uh, they have you know, a bunch of um, like land uh, from where they are, uh, you know, I don't think farming is the right word for it, um, exploration, um, where they're using that land to extract, there we go, uh, the diamonds from. So when they have a value um, of what that land costs to acquire, as well as um, the costs um, to make the land um, you know, ready for extraction, and then they actually have to also include the present value of all costs to reclimate that land, that is, make that land you know, back up to being good. Um, and what is good? Well, it's typically uh, determined by standards that the government sets. This also goes for oil and gas extraction, landfills, any sort of business where your intent is to temporarily disturb the environment. And I, and I realize I say the word temporarily, uh, and that is a loaded um, item right now. And I think that's a really good discussion to have, just not right this second. Uh, so the intent is to put a present value of those future cash flows and put that into the cost of the asset that's on your books. Uh, this is something that you will, if you proceed to be um, accounting major or accounting third year, uh, you will see it in 3105 um, where they're looking at asset retirement obligations. But all you need to know is for now is that those future obligations are present valued and added to the cost of the asset. Uh, we typically um, divide the pp and &E into a couple of different subclasses. Um, to kind of demonstrate that we understand the particularities of different subsets of PP&E. So these classes include land, land improvements, buildings, and equipment, and they're how most of the rest of this chapter is going to be separated. After acquisition, uh, these assets are going to still create some costs. Uh, you will have two types of costs one operating expenditure which are operating in the sense that they're only benefiting in the current period uh, these are required to maintain assets in normal operating condition and these are expensed immediately uh, to the uh, income statement then you also have additional capital expenditures uh, these will be capitalized to the asset and that's because they increase the life of the asset, its productivity or efficiency. So if it increases the life, the productivity or the efficiency of the asset, we capitalize it. That means we either add it to the asset or create a separate um, asset category. And if it only benefits uh, that asset in the current period, it's deemed to be operating in which we say we expense it right away. So what do you think? We have two different items here. Um, take a pause of the video answer these questions and come back and see if we agree. Welcome back. Uh, a, the installation of air conditioning in a delivery van that previously did not have air conditioning. All right, well, I gotta say uh, that my former acquaintances, uh, delivery people, would be very, very excited. They would say that that was a betterment to the delivery van that would extend beyond many, many years and that it definitely increased uh, the productivity of their work and therefore of the van. Uh, so they would say that's a capital expenditure and it should be capitalized. Okay, what about an oil change in the delivery van? Well, oil changes, just like gasoline, are a part of doing business, a part of operating that delivery van. I uh, can't get around it, it doesn't really add any more value. You know, it's not like we see a bunch of advertisements for it, well, like on Kijiji when buying a car. Fresh oil change. It's like, no, nah. like, thanks. Thanks for doing your car owner job. So this is operating and will be expensed directly to the income statement. Okay, so let's start looking at specific types of asset. The first is land. 
The cost of the land includes purchase price, any closing costs uh, such as title search and legal fees, additional costs to prepare the land for its intended use. Uh, so this could be mowing, it could be legal, uh, less any proceeds from the salvage of this land. Uh, land has uh, an unlimited life, therefore we do not depreciate land. So that is something that we need to like star and asterisk. We never depreciate land. All right. Next, land improvements. The costs of structural additions made to a property, perhaps it's paving, fencing, or sidewalks, these are not recorded as land, but rather land improvements. Uh, the decline in service potential over time, that is, uh, you know, for example, you can't just pave, uh, you know, a road once, it's gonna need additional maintenance. It only has, um, you know, it has a de definite uh, not an indefinite, uh, has a defined uh, length of useful time or useful life, and they are depreciated over that useful life. Uh, this does not include the costs of land uh, getting ready to use, but rather they are structural additions made to the property, and they're in their own category, land improvements. All right, let's take a break and uh, see what we think. Uh, so what is the difference between getting the land ready to use and land improvements. All right, well, I know we were just there, but you know, hey, learning is repeated exposure, same or similar materials, and application of those items. So uh, when we look at land improvements, those are like things that we do, um, you know, to enhance the usability of the land, fences, paving, uh, things like that. And whereas getting uh, the land ready to use, uh, that might be things like mowing, uh, their one-time land, you're like, you go and clean up, like if you buy, get a scream and deal on something, but somebody's left all their trash there, hence why you got a scream and deal. Uh, that cost to clean up the land to get ready for use, that is gonna be uh, an item that you would capitalize and it would go to the land account because you couldn't use it without doing it. All right, so back to our discussion about different types of pp &E. Now we have our buildings. All expenditures related to the purchase or construction of a building uh, should be capitalized to that building upon acquisition. This includes purchase price, any closing costs uh, such as legal fees, and costs required to make the building ready for intended use. So similarly, if you buy a foreclosed building and it's filled with trash, this would include uh, any costs required to make that building ready for its intended use. Then, um, or you may also uh, construct a building. And so costs there may consist of the contract price, architect's fees, building permits, excavation costs, uh, and interest co uh, costs during construction. So that's kind of an interesting one. Again, uh, that gets a little bit more ca uh, complicated um, in a future class, but all you need to know for now is that interest costs incurred while you are constructing a building should be capitalized to the cost of that building itself. And land. Uh, these land um, costs include the purchase price, pardon me, did I say land? I'm sorry, equipment, because <laughs> the next part would have been a little bit confusing. Uh, these costs include the purchase price, any freight charges, and insurance um, during transit paid by the purchaser. So for example, uh, my friends uh, started a pizza business. It was Italian, it was thin crust. Uh, they flew out the oven from Italy and also paid the um, an Italian man uh, to assemble it and test it and uh, install it. So all of those costs, as well as the insurance for um, the oven to get over here, are things that they all capitalized to the cost of that equipment. All right, time for a question. What are some of ex the expenditures that would be included in the cost of a specialized piece of equipment that a company ordered and had delivered from another country? Oh goodness, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, maybe, well, let's see if you can think of a non-pizza related instance. I'll give you a few minutes and then we'll do a debrief. All right, so let's think for example of a People that sew, please don't hate me, um, but I'm thinking about like somebody who sews, it's a very specialized piece of equipment, 
say from <laughs> Milan, <laughs> Italy? Sure, we bring it over. Uh, we might want to ensure the special sewing device, the, uh, you know, the stitcher thing. And then, um, but an expense I didn't um, talk about, or sorry, a cost I didn't talk about potentially in capitalizing before was duty. So when you buy something from another country and bring it into yours, there might be duty charges on top, um, as well as some shipping costs. And yeah, maybe some training people to come over, show you how to use it, assemble it, and install it. So anything required to get that piece of specialized sewing equipment over here, in addition to the cost of the sewing equipment itself, is gonna be capitalized to the asset. People, if you're thinking, oh, this is you know trickery or this should be expense, no, 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 like here's the thing. We're gonna look at learning objective number two, where we see, cool, whatever you capitalize, if it doesn't have an indef indefinite life, meaning if it has like a, a useful life, meaning it's gonna become not useful in five or 10 years or whatever, it depends on that asset, we have to depreciate over time. And so it will hit our profit and loss statement eventually. So don't worry, no no Halloween shenanigans here, uh, but rather it's, it's timing, people. It's timing and it's to depict the uh, economic reality of this company. If we were to expense everything as we paid the cash for it, well, then we would be cash-based accounting, not accrual-based accounting. All right, so let's take another look at an example. And so I want you to pause this video. I would like you to uh, come up with what you think the cost of the land is, and we will see if our answer is match. All right, if you said the cost of the land should be 490,000, woohoo, you are correct. And so that equals the cash price of 450, the legal fees of 8,500, the cost to remove that dang building uh, that is on there, as well as the cost of clearing uh, and grading to get that uh, land ready for use. It does not include the installation of the fence. Why not? Well, you are correct if you said that goes to land improvements. The fence itself is a land improvement. Uh, it will get its own spot on uh, the financial statements or at least its own kind of line in the note to PPE, &E, and it will be depreciated uh, over the useful life of the fence itself, which we will talk about in learning objective number two. All right, so now we have one last activity and we're building up. Uh, I would like you to go through and tell me, is it O for operating, C for capital, or NA for not applicable? Uh, pause this, uh, go through this activity, and when you come back, we will round out and finish off learning objective number one. We'll talk soon. All right repair the building roof. Well, this gives us no indication that they added any value or life or um, any utility or efficiency. Uh, rather, it sounds like they just got up there and you know repaired it. So cool, uh, that's gonna be an operating expense. Replace the building roof. Well, now we have a whole nother ball game, so to speak. Uh, we have a whole new piece of the building, it's a roof we do need to capitalize it because it does extend the building's useful life. Uh, without that, um, the building would likely, you know, uh, people inside would get rained on um, or, uh, you know, could start some mold damage, et cetera, et cetera. So we would capitalize that new roof. All right, purchase a building. If you said C, capitalize, you'd be correct. We're gonna be using this building for much more than a year. Uh, it, it'll be used in many years of operations, not just one, therefore we capitalize it. Same with, um, oops, sorry. Um, same with the insurance on equipment in transit. It's a necessary cost of getting that um, equipment to us safe and sound. So capitalize it. And capitalizing a purchase truck. Hope to use it over many, many years. However, oil and gas for that truck, 155, that's gonna be an operating expense. Um, it does not extend the useful life and it doesn't do anything for its value. Um, same with the replacing tires on the truck. However, when you have retirement costs for a plant, for a manufacturing plant, that's just like restoration costs to land when you have a mining company or an oil company, uh, therefore we are going to capitalize that. Of course, we are going to capitalize it at the present value of the future costs, but um, all you need to know for this course is that we capitalize it. 
And similarly, we capitalize a new wing to the building. We are going to increase the efficiency, the effectiveness, the gosh, it's extended beyond several, several, several years. We have a new wing, just like a new wing to the hospital. But if we were to paint that um, new, new in, or I don't know, paint our existing interior of the building, um, we are, you know, I know this could be argued. Oops. Um, I know this could be argued for extending the useful life, but let's just say uh, they just did some basic painting. They were like, oh gosh, this is, this is not awesome. Um, maybe they have to paint it every year. Uh, I know that in some uh, jurisdictions, I don't know Canada, but possibly the States, every time your renters move out, you have to paint. Um, so it doesn't extend the useful life. However, it does you know, just help kind of keep things going. Paint to the interior of a building is kind of like um, oil and gas for a truck. Alrighty. So thank you so, so much. Uh, that was the end of our learning objective number one video and the quote beginning of the story. I will see you next in learning objective two where we'll look at the middle of the story. Talk soon.